As we just saw, Man City kind of made it look easy as that match got longer. Danny, they did what they had to do. Mm. What impressed you along the way? It's Phil Foden again. He's just... He's, he's an absolute genius. He's one, he, he's one of those players you would pay whatever money it takes to watch him. Mm -hmm. he's, what, he's what we'd call like in England a street footballer. He just plays with such freedom. And I think the interesting thing for Guardiola going forward is that he's better in the middle. But there's only so many players you can play in the middle. You know, you've got De Bruyne, you've got Silva, you've got Foden. So I found that fascinating. But he, he for me, just completely stole the show. I think he's amazing. Well, I, I think when we talk about why City is so great... It, you know, Phil Foden gets the hat trick. Um, Pep makes these changes. But it's Phil Foden's third goal. He, lose, he, these, he loses the ball. His team's already winning. He can throw his hands up, let someone else do the work. He has a tenacity to run after the ball and chase it and win it back and, and go for another one. And, and, and I think that Pep has instilled almost that fear into his players that you have to train well, you have to play well, and if you don't, I've got a whole host of players that will come take your, your spot. And because he's created that culture, you can now see why they continue to win titles. And they're still very much in the title hunt this season. And they did that all without De Bruyne yeah. and without Holland the entire match. They did. And, and, you know, you can look at it one of two ways. Like, at first you're looking and think, OK, well, maybe he's resting them. But if you're going to rest them, you probably rest them for the Real Madrid game and, and you don't play them the weekend against Crystal Palace away. With all the goodwill in the world, that's probably going to be... Not as difficult as, as what today could have been. But I just think what Pep Guardiola does, he makes his players multifunctional as well. He doesn't need to have these huge squad, squads, but you look at so many players, they can play multiple positions. So if you want to give whoever it is a rest, you can do that. But the one thing that always stands out, the one player that very rarely gets a rest, is Rodri. He's the one player within that group that is irreplaceable. And him, alongside Foden today, just another world-class performance from him. There was that moment, Tim, late in the first half where it was 1-1, and we're all keeping an eye on Arsenal pulling away. You know they're going to get the three points. It was kind of nervy there for a moment. There was no panic, though, and that second half was entirely City. I mean, that's the great thing about City. We, we, you're, you're watching the game. You're actually thinking, this could get nervy. This, there could be a problem. And I don't think, I don't think City bat an eye. I think they just, it's, yeah, okay, they conceded a goal. That happens. In fact, it's happened probably more this season than it has Previously, they go through the motions, they go through the gears, they figure out how to pick teams apart, and they never stop. That's what I mean. There's not a, there's not a clock mm -hmm. for them. It's not, well, we have to get the goals down. They know they're going to put so much pressure on you with and without the ball for the course of 90 minutes. They know that they're going to break you. So they don't ever deviate from their plan. They don't have to. Uh, of course, at halftime, Pep makes one or two changes, tweaks that oftentimes you don't even see, but he gets his team in a position where they're absolutely going to flourish. The inevitable comparison that takes place when we're watching City win yep. and then two inches to the left, the monitor has Arsenal winning. Where does your mind go then? The, you can see Arteta and Guardiola very, very similar. Obviously, Arteta worked under Guardiola for a long time. What Arteta's now got with this Arsenal team is something that Manchester City have had for so long. They don't panic. I think Arsenal... Last season, at times, they panicked. It was like, oh, we've got to go and get a goal. But they just, they trust the process. And like Tim was saying about Manchester City, they, they could be going into the last five minutes of the game, losing 2-1. They're not going to panic because they believe in what they're doing. And I think that's something now, which has given Arsenal, you know, they've made up that ground as well. Now, there's no panic. They don't, they don't, they don't worry about things. They always trust the process. And it's like, we keep doing what we're doing and we're going to have success with it. And, and that's why all three of these teams, Arsenal, Liverpool and Manchester City, are, are worthy to be champions because there is no panic. Liverpool mm. has gone behind on a whole host of... Uh, times this season and they know they're going to get the goal it might come late it might come in injury time doesn't matter they all believe all three of these teams believe now if you're watching along with us uh, you listen to Peter Drury and Lee Dixon they had the call with us here and guys thanks for sticking around and spending time with us you've seen this many times uh, you've been at the end of a match where City flexed its muscles in the second half and walk away with all three points what are you taking away from this specific win now actually Paul I think we we've both been saying just now um a reminder of the relentlessness and a reminder for the other clubs involved that they're probably going to have to win all or at least almost all because City don't look as yeah. if they will lose. No, and I think the, the lads are talking about belief. I think all, all three teams have got to believe they're going to win all games, but I guarantee that all three of them won't win every single game between them. There will, there will be a slip up and tonight was one of those games. It was an awkward game to start with and I think once the City went 1-0 up and then you're in a position where 
they get back in it, Villa, and then all of a sudden, if they get to half time, it could have been a bit sticky for them. But that goal, that 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 fold and free kick, just set Villa back on the heels, and then you go, they're going to go on and they're going to win it, and exactly what they did. But there's going to be games that are going to be sticky for the other teams as well, and it's whoever blinks first. It's one of them. I honestly believe that if you if they lose one of the game, get, games gets lost by one of the teams, everyone will write them off. And it's there's still eight games to go. There's still a lot of points, but this team have probably got the easiest running. You have to look at it and say they've got the easiest running. They've been there before. They've done it before. They've got a massively strong squad that will just keep churning these results out. So yes, I know Liverpool. Um, it's in their hands, and they can go top again tomorrow when, when they beat Sheffield United like we think they are but I still believe that these are favourites because of that relentlessness you talked about. And just briefly what did you make of the selection tonight? What did you make of Haaland De Bruyne sitting on the bench and, and, and carrying it off so well? Gen genius you know again from Pep because you look at Haaland on that bench he was licking his lips he was like so sad he wasn't on so good luck to the centre-backs at, uh, at Crystal Palace at the weekend because I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll be back off that bench and De Bruyne and leading up to that Madrid game I think a game before the Madrid game is a good idea I don't think you should rest him before a big game I always like to play a game before you then play the bigger game if you like but Palace is a bigger game. Don't let's not forget that because they're going for three, uh, four in a row. They certainly are, uh, which is an indication of what we already knew and what we were reminded of again here this evening, Paul. That uh, that Manchester City are very good. Whoever finishes champions above City, boy, that will be some achievement. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.